Okay, we're back here on the camera again. Uh, I, I know uh, in the last display case video, I said that was going to be the last one uh, that we had the case completed. And actually, we did. Uh, and I put some stain on it. I finally have got the glass in it in here, here for it. And uh, so I'm assembling the thing. And I come up on another step right there that I thought might be of interest to somebody. And uh, so I thought I'd shoot just a little bit of video on it. What it is, uh, is the uh, is the things that we're going to use to uh, attach the glass to the wood frames. Uh, of course, you can buy these things. The rocker sells them. Uh, uh, various assorted woodworking places sell different ones. Uh, uh, you can buy plastic ones, metal ones, adjustable ones. Uh, just just uh, any number of options available to you if that's what you want to do. But we wanted to use uh, some custom pieces on this. This is a custom cabinet, so. Uh, want to use all wood on it so I made my own and uh, what I want to do here is, is uh, show you a little bit of the steps that I used to make it the first thing you got to determine is, is how wide you need them and how long uh, how much how much difference between your uh, rabbit that's in the wood and the thickness of the glass uh, you, you have to determine that so you can cut the proper lip on it so it'll set flat in there but Anyway, let me get, uh, I've got one glass, I've got one glass already installed with some that I've made here, and let me spin the camera around and see if I can get, uh, get a shot of one of those, uh, it's a little, maybe a little bit dark, so I don't know how that'll work out, we'll, we'll have to see, so, uh, anyhow, let me, let me spin the camera around here on this piece of glass that I've already got in the cabinet. And we'll do a little zoom work here and if it'll cooperate. So there is one of our, I don't know where I've got that in focus or not. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that's, that's one of our pieces that, that's already in here. I've got uh, I've got five on this glass. I've got two down each side, one here and one down here, and then I got the piece up here, and I think that'll be sufficient for this for this one. And, and what we're starting out with is, is our stock. It's about five eighths of an inch wide, uh, about three eighths of an inch thick, seven sixteenths, something like that. Uh, and we'll cut them from here, and I'll show you through the steps how to do that. Like I said, this this is a this is a custom thing. So if you ever wanted to make any, they may need to be bigger or smaller or entirely different size or whatever. But this is this is the size we're going to work on here. And I'm making these out of walnut. Uh, just a little bit of a contrast. It's still a dark wood and it'll look good in here. But don't have to worry too much about the color. Uh, we needed to make them out of hardwood so they'd be durable. So, but we'll make them and we'll cut the fit here and then we'll bore a hole and, and, uh, for the screw and, and screw them to the frame so that holds the glass in good and tight and if anything ever happens you can take them out like I said you can you can buy any number of different ones uh, from from several places but <clears throat> I elected to make these and make them out of walnut so we'll run through the steps on how to do that first thing first thing I've done is, is get you get your stock cut whatever size that you determine that you want to use like I said this one's about five eighths of an inch wide about three eighths, seven sixteenths thick, something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, let me see. I don't know if I can. You can see it or not. On this one here, I use a one eighth round over and round over the edges all all the way around the stick. Now these pieces get really small, and they get kind of dangerous to work with when things get that small. So what we're going to do is is work with it off of this stick for as long as possible. So round this over on these edges. Then we'll take over here the bandsaw and we'll cut a cut back here on how much how much we need right here to lay to set flat on the frame we we'll come over and get into the glass and hold it hold it flat there so it's three thirty seconds of an inch that's got to be cut out of there to make it do that so uh we'll do that on the bandsaw while it's still all on this stick we'll take we'll cut that back and then we'll take it to the arm saw we'll cut that waist away and then we'll uh, go back to the other bandsaw and cut the length of it 
and then we'll take it back over to the router station and round over the end where we cut it. And uh, so let me just move the camera over there and get started on that. Let's show okay, got the Shopsmith bandsaw set up right here with a, <coughs> a quarter inch blade on it, pretty small blade, and I got me a stop set. So I've got the proper depth. I'm gonna take this thing in here and saw back for the relief on it, where it'll have where it'll set up flush on the frame, and then it'll overhang enough to uh, to fit tight against the glass. So I've got this already set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take and cut both ends of that. That's another thing we we get the stock made. We we work both ends at the same time. So it cuts down the amount of work you cut each end, and you can get one piece off of each end and just keep working toward the center. See if we can see that. Yeah. Okay. Now that's what we're going to be. Now we'll take it over here to the arm saw, and we'll cut this waste away, right here. This this will be waste piece right here. So we'll take it over your arm saw and cut those away. All right. Now I've already got a stop set up here for this. Uh, when you cut this thing, we want to cut this waste away right here, but we don't want we don't want to come back in here and cut any further than what we saw with the band saw. So when you set your stop up. You want to make sure that your, your your blade will come up here and just cut right off where you where you uh, stop cutting with the bandsaw blade. And that gives us waste, and it'll just step right out. To the other end. And that just, all that just leaves a splinter. Just take your finger and pull it out. I got that, I got that saw set perfectly, <laughs> perfectly the right height that time. Uh, so a lot of times it's hard to get it that close. But. So there we got that. <clears throat> now we're gonna move over here to the other band saw and we're gonna cut this thing the proper length. So it's already got the saw set up here. I said I was making something while ago. So what we'll do this, is we just cross cut this piece to the proper length. Now I know I've probably got a little bit too too coarse of a blade right here. I've been doing some resawing and these are small pieces but uh, I use a backer on it here to hold it, stri uh, hold it straight and it, it saws it plenty smooth enough we'll take it and sand it after we get uh, after we get it cut right there uh, make sure that it's nice and smooth on that end so anyway I'll show you how that works. And now here's our saw stop running. We get a little less noise in here. Uh, here here's one of our pieces. Uh, it's rounded over with a one eighth round over on three sides. See now here's here's where it's cut off. And we've got our three thirty seconds cut out here, so it can sit on the frame, and yet come over and hold the glass in. Now what we'll do now is we'll sand the smooth sand this end smooth here, or we just cut it with a bandsaw. And we'll take it over here to the dedicated router table, and I'll round this over, this little edge right here, to match these other round overs. You may not get some comments about this, so I'll tell you, don't try this at home. If you do this and you skin your fingers, it's all on you. <laughs> but it is, it is a little bit uh, a little bit tedious to work with pieces this small, uh, and uh, a lot of people might not be comfortable with it. Of course, this this sander here, it's not it's not all that bad. We are going to take it over here to the router table in a minute. And we're going to round that thing over. So I know that's going to make people cringe, but anyway. See, now we're just smooth and slick. And I realize not everybody's got a has got a sander like this, so 
you know, you can sand it by hand. Uh, it would be a lot safer. Uh, and that, that wasn't that rough. I mean, even though it was a pretty coarse blade on my bandsaw there, and I didn't want to change it out for these little pieces, uh, it, it still wouldn't take a whole lot to, to sand it off by hand. Uh, but I am a power tool kind of guy. So this is what's going to, this is probably what brings out the safety police, so but that's all right. They'll just have to get over it. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do here is, uh, like I said, before we cut these off right here, now it's just straight and square. And it don't have a round over like the like the sides and like it did before before we cut it. So the first thing we're going to do is take the router table and we're going to round these ends back over on the stock. Now what we're going to do is we're going to round over the end here where we cut it off. And this is another one of them advisors. Don't try this at home. See now we've got a we've got a good round over on this end, like the rest of it. And I realize it looks quite dangerous, and it can be. But now remember, we got this <coughs> we got the dedicated router up here, and we got a zero clearance plate, and the amount of that bit. So you can you can run your fingers all around that right there. You, you'd have to really, really get in there and get your finger down in there to get it cut. I mean, don't get me wrong; it could happen. There's people out there, I'm sure, that can do it. But this is one of those things, you know. If you if you've got a different way, if, if this makes you uncomfortable, then by all means, don't don't do it. Uh, I don't have any problem with this. I, it don't worry me, and I, I don't feel unsafe doing it. Anytime you're doing something and you don't feel safe doing it, stop. It don't make no difference where you saw somebody else do it and they say it's perfectly safe. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, then stop. Uh, do it do it some other way, because uh, that, that's when you go want to get hurt. But nonetheless, we're back on this, and I'll do this other piece. See, I take this piece and push it through. All I'm really doing is holding down pressure on this piece to keep it from lifting up. I'll take this piece here and push it through. And this has already got it on it so you don't rub the blade and it gives you, gives you a good 8 one eighth round over all over your piece there. Turns out well. And then you've got your stock rounded over on each end to start with uh, making you two more again. My drill press got a laser, so I've got it set up here with some scrap. And what I can do here, I don't know if you can see my laser running on this thing or not. I believe we can see it there. Anyway, <clears throat> my retainer will fit up on here, and I can use my laser marks there on it to get it centered. Uh, I've got my bit set like I want it. Uh, from the edge and, and all got it all set up so each one I put in there I just take and use the laser get it centered up and bore the hole using a little countersink and put a hole in it and it's countersunk for the screw so it'll be flat on it and it won't bust the wood and then you can just uh, And we can just put a screw in it, and it's ready to mount. And put the glass in, and put them things on it, and it's ready to go. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and show that. Uh, put this other glass in this thing, and we're finally going to get this uh, get this display case finished up. <clears throat> and uh, here locally, here where I live, it's been raining for. Way over a week, and uh, we've got flash floods and terrible rain, and you know, we're talking about six inches of snow for tonight and tomorrow. So <laughs> I don't know when I get to deliver the thing. Uh, I, I am going to be able to move it in an enclosed trailer, but uh, still taking it out and moving it up there to the dealership and and all that sort of thing. So we don't know when it's going to happen, but 
nonetheless, we, we got the project finished. It uh, will be finished. Uh, I get this other glass put in it. Uh, and it turned out great. Uh, everybody's seen it. They uh, really like it and say it looks grand. And uh, I just wanted to show about these pieces. If you was working on a project that had some glass in it, and uh, I just want to remind everybody, you, you have options other than going and buying retainers to hold your glass in. You can make them if you want to put forth a little effort. Uh, it, it's a little bit aggravating because it's hard to work with small pieces. If you don't have the tools, uh, if you don't have some of the dedicated tools, you're probably better off to buy them uh, unless your project just won't allow it. Uh, it, it, takes, uh, it takes several different tools. And there, there's different ways of doing it. I, I've, uh, I've made them before and you can use a table saw and a tenon and jig to actually make the things. Uh, I don't much like to do that. You, 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 it throws your work around when it comes off the blade and that sort of thing. But it's it's pretty safe. You can put it in your tenon and jig and, and then you can get you, your uh, blade down to make your cuts and cut away the waste. And you can use your mitre gauge and a zero clearance insert and it, and it works pretty well. Uh, uh, the bandsaw thing works works well for me. I've got the two and that set each one and, and that, that gives me an advantage. But like I said, if you don't have uh, if you don't have all these dedicated tools and you're working on a project and you need something to hold your glass in, uh, any of the any of the woodworking supply places, uh, uh, like I said, uh, Rocker, I, I saw them in their their, uh, their uh, catalog, and uh, and you can look online for them and in other places too, uh, uh, Woodcraft, I saw some there. I don't know, not advertised for these people, you know, but hey, <clears throat> you need to know something you need to know. It don't make no difference where it comes from or who sells it. I, that's the way I think. Uh, building a project and somebody needs something, hey, I'll tell them, if I know where to get it, I'll tell them it don't matter who it is, you know, that's, I'm not, uh, that's, <laughs> that's not a bad thing. But anyway, just wanted to put that in there and show how that was done right quick and uh, I want to finish putting this other glass in this thing and get this thing done and put it over here against the wall out of my way. And they're going to get on other projects. I've got, uh, I've got molding made and painted. Uh, I've got that stuff painted and it's ready to put in on a job site up there. And uh, got some cabinet work off of that job site, just a small cabinet. I'm going to reface the vanity and make some new doors and drawer fronts. But I've got, to, uh, I'm going to have videos coming up, and it's going to be a multi-part thing, probably several parts. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know where it's a good thing to do a. Uh, a multi-part video thing like that or not I don't know I'm, I'm all I, I keep uh, I keep thinking sometimes when it's got so many parts like there that people may lose lose interest in it uh, and watch one or two and, and not bother with it anymore and that's okay uh, the reason it's going to be so many parts it's another uh, uh, it's another fish tank cabinet uh, I know there's several parts in the other fish tank cabinet but people seem to enjoy it and this is going to be uh, going to be the same way. It won't be quite as big. It, uh, it's a little bit smaller tank that this one's going on. It, but the front of the tank is bowed. So when I build the cabinet, the cabinet's going to actually be bowed. So we're going to be bending face frames. We're going to be bending door frames and panels because the doors is going to curve with the face of the cabinet and they're all going to have the profile of the glass fish tank. So that's going to be really interesting for a lot of people, I'm sure. Uh, we get into uh, we get into doing some bent laminate work on the face frames and the rails and styles and even the panels. So uh, that's going to get really interesting uh, for those for those folks that, that's interested in that kind of stuff. A lot of woodworking techniques are that you don't see too much on the on the YouTube. I mean, I've seen people on our bending wood. Uh, and that sort of thing. You, you can find a whole lot of videos of that going on. But you don't see too much of people actually making face frames and and, uh, and coping stick frames for doors and panels. And this is going to be a raised panel door. It's going to have arched top also. So we're talking about a raised panel arched top curved door. <laughs> well that's going to be interesting. So we've got that coming up. I've already got that job and I'm uh, I'm doing the uh, uh, calculating for the amount of wood and everything that I want to need now so I can give those folks a price on it and they can uh, uh, give me the go ahead, the final go ahead and uh, deposit on it. So, uh, But uh, they are going to do this and uh, 
So we're going to have that coming up, and that's going to be really interesting. Uh, so keep checking back, and uh, and we'll get started on that, and you'll be able to see the progress on it. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.